Hey, it's a new day here at Head First Fishing. We're at the Park Boulevard boat ramp at Indian Shores, and we got a new charter boat ready to test it out and put it through its paces. Come check it out. So back in June, we got rid of the Sportsman 207. It was a great boat. I was actually looking at Sportsman's for some time. Uh, but after a search, I decided I wanted to go a little bit different direction and uh, look at a used boat. And uh, this Century Bay boat popped up online on Facebook. And uh, this is a really nice boat. They actually don't even make it anymore. They make the offshore boats. But this one caught my eye. I like the layout of it. Um, it's a fast boat. It came with a 250 horsepower Yamaha on it. it came with a jack plate. It came with an older uh, power pole on the back. And uh, it's a really nice package and it was a really affordable price. So I'm pretty stoked about it. But this is part of a new beginning for Head First Fishing. We got our new charter boat and I think it's gonna get a lot of fish blood on the deck. So we'll do a quick little walk around here at the ramp. We'll get it in the water. We'll talk some more about it and then we'll run it and see what she can do. So out of my super cluttered truck, comes a full complement of new O'Hara rods and reels. St. Pete Fishing Outfitters. Well matched. Provided right inshore and nearshore game fish. We got some Hyper 3000s and some 5000s. Great multi-purpose setups. These are going in the boat, coming along with us for a ride. Also, Suncoast Auto Marine, Chummer Slingshot, chumming device. Really handy tool. I like it especially for chumming dead bait. Works pretty good for live bait too. Also got some Yozuri diving plugs and some stinger rigs coming on board. It's kingfish season, so we gotta be ready for that at all times. So I decided to go ahead and drop a big piece of coin on a new Rodan trolling motor. I've used Motor Guide, I've used Minn Kota, and now I'm trying Rodan, and I've heard a lot of good things about it, and uh, supposedly the GPS functions are really good on it, so, you know, spot lock in today's world is essential, but definitely excited about trying this out and seeing what it can do. So we'll start bow to stern in the new boat. Uh, we got a little live wheel right here. That can pop off. Actually, it pops off from the front here. that up that'd be a good place I'd probably put shrimp in there I think that's gonna be my shrimp line a little lock that down lock these back down if I can get it to lock down there we go put some new plastic rod holders I may upgrade to uh, stainless eventually some of these were cracked so I just went ahead and replaced them come on back here I'll get this out of your way. Over here to the dash, we've got a new Simrad unit. That pops right off there. That's the Simrad Go 9 XSE. That's the perfect size for this boat. And it has structure scan, traditional sonar, and it has the side scan. Side scan is something I've wanted for a while. The technology has been out for uh, many years, but it's still very relevant today as far as finding spots way out to the side. I know they have 3D sonar now, but I still really like the side scan ability to find structure all over the place as you're running. That's really nice. So I also added a Fusion stereo and a standard horizon radio. So we got tunes. And if I need to talk to the Coast Guard or talk to my fishing buddies over radio, we got that capability. Also, definitely need to have that for emergencies, for sure. And what you can do with a link, you can connect your GPS to this radio in an emergency, you just mash that button and it'll send out your coordinates just like that. Pretty cool little safety feature there. So, one of the things I wanted to improve on over my last boat was live well capacity, particularly having a big live well, one big live well. But with this one, I got two in the back. So that was a big uh, decision point for me. So right here, 
we got 40 gallons of live well modified the drain to help help it drain quicker and have less clogs and then over here that's also a 30 gallon live well probably intended a little bit more for releases for tournaments but certainly just as capable for holding even more bait so uh, that's what is that 35 40 75 gallons of live bait can you imagine the possibilities I'm seeing a lot of chum flying out of this boat. So today we're mostly just going to be testing out the functions of the boat. We're going to do some high speed runs, some cornering, get some nice video of the boat doing its thing. Might even do a little bit of fishing after that. I got a little spot up the intercoastal here, right here at the Park Boulevard Bridge. There sh should be a lot of bait back up in this little, little corner here. Uh, there's a lot of oysters and mangroves over here so i think we'll go get bait because we're right here and then we'll go down to the high speed area where you can open it up and do the testing and then after that whatever opportunity presents itself we'll take it let's go ahead and play with this trolling motor go we are connected but we're not in the water <laughs> here we go first use of the Rodan reasonably quiet The light were. Let's pull in here and see if we see any bait. I got the new 10 foot quarter inch mesh humpback in the bucket there. The Lee Fisher nets, outstanding nets. Let's get this thing up to full speed, see what it does. I'm just gonna hold the button down. Some bait right there. Thirty-six volt, one hundred and twenty pound. It's moving. That's maxed out. Ooh, we got some something's popping bait down here. It was a bird or what? It's pretty quick. It's pretty quick. All right, so we're headed south now just left Park Boulevard ramp and now we're gonna go over to the Johns Pass area and uh, just get this boat up running uh, you know, see what the top speed is and uh, we're gonna put it through some corners and uh, play with the jack plate and see what kind of performance we can get out of it but uh, definitely looking to see how fast it can go with my other boat it had the 115 horsepower motor on it super cheap on gas not very fast so I like the fact that I've got 250 horses now to propel me and I can get to where I'm going with a full load with no problem. I like that a lot. Alright, well we're out of the slow zone in the intercoastal and now we can finally open this baby up. So let's put the throttle down and see what happens. Give a little bit of a bow down on the trim tab. Yamaha gauge says 46 miles per hour topped out. So let's see what GPS says.
birds hovering right over here. You see them right there. That's the biggest pinfish I've caught in a long time. That's huge. Drop that down on a wreck and see what happens. We got daddy and a little boy. That's a grown daddy. That's a baby. That'll work good. But if you want to catch the big one, you got to have the full grown daddy. The grass flats are the nursery of the bay. That's a little juvenile speckled trout. And he's spending his life in the shallows. He's living down in that grass, feeding on little guys like this. That's what he's after. Let's see if we can get him to come back to life. A little bit banged up. There he goes. Oh, he was alive. <laughs> he was like, I'm out of here. So we got bait right here in the intercoastal. Those diving birds were the real key. I mean, there's a lot of bait fish in here. If I had chum, maybe I'd get a little bit more. But even without chum, just eyeballing where these birds are diving enabled me to get quite a bit of bait. But uh, today it's just kind of an impromptu, unplanned fishing day. So we got a good amount of bait and I'm gonna get set up another rod here. Got 30 pound test joy fish monofilament line. I use a lot of 30 pound monofilament line and this comes in spools that are very affordable, they're durable, and I can get a lot of fishing out of one spool of line. Definitely check out joy fish monofilament line. I think you'll like it. We just had a filming opportunity today, so we decided to, to go for it. We wanted to run the boat around and um, see what it could do. Maybe try a couple areas I haven't fished in a long time or a couple new areas that I haven't been. So, uh, you know, if you wait for the perfect day to go fishing, sometimes you never go fishing. So don't be afraid to go out. Even if you didn't check the tides, which I didn't today. Even if it looks kind of gloomy. Go anyway, because you never know what's going to happen. You might find your next hot spot. So we got my Joy Fish leader. We got the uh, inline O'Hara Trident circle hook, and then uh, we're tying it all together here, leader and line with a FG knot. That's a really solid knot, probably one of the strongest uh, mono to braid knots you can get. It's a really awesome knot. So then I come down here and I tie. A lot of clinch knots just because I've been doing it for so many years it's so simple just get a reasonable amount what is that about Probably about five six inches of line there 30 pound line I go one two three four and then five tuck that leg and then come back through pull it through that loop right there put that in your teeth I put my finger right there on the hook and then pull down on the main line. Presto. Just like that. You can tighten that up a little bit. Make sure there's no slack in your knots. That's a good knot right there. I try that a lot.
I'm gonna tie a Palomar knot with this jig head. The way you do that is you thread it through. Take that same line and come back. Come back through. If the eyelet's wide enough, you can just bend it and put it through. So the next thing I'm gonna do is First step is tying your shoelace, a little overhand. Some people call it a half hitch. And then the key is right here, is to bring that hook right through that loop and then neatly pull it all up and tighten it down. everything's in place. Make sure there's no line still hanging over the eyelet of the hook. So that's that's what it's trying to do. So I pull on that, pull on that. Now the knot is complete. Except for the trimming. That's one of the strongest knots out there. Now we're gonna do a uni to uni, or at least my version of the uni. So I got the tag in of my braid, the tag in of my leader line. This is 50 pound, my Harold Crystal leader. And uh, basically you're just gonna pass them by each other like that until you've got a pretty good little piece of real estate there. I've got about almost a foot of line of the leader past the end of the braid. So I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna make a loop back to where it came from. Take that and then start twirling around itself and the braid. You do that about four times. Tuck it back through the hole. Tighten it all down. Little spit helps the process. Same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, and then back through the leg, or excuse me, back through that little gap right there, and pulling straight down. The braid's a little bit easier. So now I'm gonna take these ends right here pull them down together. See how that tightened up there? Now you want to make sure that's neat. Make sure you tug on it. Make sure everything's cinched down. And that's a very strong knot. So I just remembered there was something I wanted to tell you. If you're ever in St. Petersburg, Florida, go by St. Pete Fishing Outfitters. Mention Head First Fishing on YouTube and they just might have a little discount on your next purchase. So check it out. Mention me, see what happens. So we're gonna goof around right here and see if anything can come out of this bridge not really an area I've fished much, if at all, but uh, it's known to hold some fish. Um, any bridge structure like this, big massive legs in the water, there's fenders in here. It's all going to be a place where a lot of different species like to hang out. So. Is that a big one? that big. Oh. Oh, I got a fish. I got a fish. I got a fish. I don't know what it is. Oh yeah, it's a trout. Big old speckled trout, baby. Look at that beauty. Stump that thing real good. That is a gorgeous trout. 
I mean, thump that pinfish. It's probably about uh, 17 inches, something like that. 17, 18 inches. That is a beautiful fish. O'Hara Hyper Reel Platinum Series Rod. First time I've caught a trout on a 50 pound leader. Back here in the well for a second. A little bit banged up. The trout are a little bit delicate. They have scales come off real easy. So before I let them go, I want to make sure that he or she, probably a female trout, um, is in good shape. Handle it further is a good idea to do it right here in this well. That is a pretty fish. Let's go ahead and let it go. Away from the cormorant. <laughs> I think it's a little bit big, a little bit big for the cormorant, but uh, let's let him go. Hold over here. into the current. There he goes. Gosh darn it. <laughs> well, I've had a lot of fun playing around today. There's a, I don't know, there's probably 40 or 50 snook right here, but I guess they're too well fed and they don't like my offerings. That's all right though. I will be back and I will get them. Thanks for coming by Head First Fishing today. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification button, check out St. Pete Fishing Outfitters, and I'll see you later.